Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guest today is Sean Ulmer, director of the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. Um, I say this every week that we have an in-studio guest. It's so nice to see all of your face. Exactly. Same way. Mm Mm-hmm. So, uh, but the museum has actually been open for some time with uh, exhibits and all because museums are actually designed pretty much perfectly for social distancing and absolutely. not touch, yeah, you, don't touch anything. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, no, you're absolutely right. We've been open since last June. So we've been open over a year now. Um, we had to do the closure from March to June. But, uh, but yeah, we've got all kinds of safety protocols in place and cleanliness is amazing. Um, uh, uh, the, the, what we do there, but um, but yeah, we've we've been open. We're, we're used to having people come through. It's a nice, big, spacious uh, area. You can easily socially distance from each other and still enjoy really wonderful art. And you have uh, held over a couple of excellent exhibits that I've been to see a couple of times. I oh, think good. Oh, good. so. We'll we'll talk about that. But I guess the big news is you have continued with your free summer, and yep. summer is waning, and so is free admission. I guess. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, for the twelfth year in a row, we've been able to offer free summer for all. So basically, free admission for anybody in the months of July and August, and we will end it on September fifth, so the Sunday of Labor Day weekend. So you have until that point to take advantage of this really wonderful program. And the whole idea is to get as many people to come and experience and enjoy the art without having that financial barrier. And easy just to bring, you know, to bring the whole family, bring company uh, and everything. Well, so let's talk about the exhibits. Because I said that you've held them over. They've been here for a while. But, Mm -hmm. oh, there's, you know, the, the... exhibits that you've held over are just stunning yes. both of them are well as some uh people will know last year was our 125th anniversary we had three big blockbusters planned of course we had to shut down midway through the first one when we reopened last june we were able to extend that one but that meant pushing our summer show to the fall and our fall show to the spring so you know flexibility is the key word during a pandemic so um, our fall show was supposed to we were going to end our 125th with a really deep dive into the work of grant wood And so we opened um, 2021 with Grant Wood instead, which worked perfectly because our plans for 2021 had always been about premiering and showcasing um, Iowa artists in celebration of Iowa's 175th anniversary of statehood. So we had planned an all Iowa year. We had to make some changes, but we made, but Grant Wood fits perfectly into an all Iowa year. Uh, and so we have three um, temporary exhibitions on Grant Wood in addition to our regular permanent gallery on Grant Wood. So you can do a real deep dive on him. And so that was supposed to end in May, but it's been so popular that we decided to extend it through free summer. That's right. And I said two, and they're actually three. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just and for those who haven't seen them, just briefly sketch out the three. Yeah. Well, the biggest show, Five Galleries, is called Grant Wood Revealed, Rarely Seen Works by an American Master. And that's where we kind of dig down into the collection and borrowed from private collections that we know um, in the area and outside the area, actually, um, to show his metalwork, his his childhood drawings, his Indian Creek series, his trips to France. The things that, you know, people know all the heavy hitters, the big, most famous works um, by Grant Wood, but they don't know All of the other stuff was really part of the puzzle, part of what made him such a great artist. Um, So that's a five gallery show. We have a one gallery show called uh, Seriously Funny, and it looks at American Gothic parodies. Of course, we don't have American Gothic, but it was, you know, a a, a sort of really key moment in his career. Um, But and it has since, you know, kept his reputation uh, alive and kept him very, very visible um, because it is a a wonderful painting um, uh, for for artists of all. Uh, ilks um, to parody uh, and so we bring out a whole bunch of those parodies as well as have a whole bunch more on flat screen so that you know the scrolling so we can present some of the more than you know 10,000 parodies that are out there um, and then we have a two uh, a two gallery show called Americans in Paris uh, Grant Wood and Marvin Cohn's 1920 trip to Paris and this really documents um, these two young Cedar Rapidian artists who go off to Paris in the summer of 1920 what they saw, what they painted, what they brought back with them. Um, and it's a, it's a nice look at really a tiny little slice um, in the moment of Grandwood and Marvin Cohn's career. I especially like how uh, you and Kate, Kate Kuhn, the curator of the museum, mm-hmm. uh, have what paired up the... 
some of the paintings that they each did of the same scene right next to each other and Mm -hmm. seeing Mm -hmm. how differently they perceived and executed the same thing that they were looking at. So glad you got that (laughs) because that was one of our goals was how you can take two artists from the same place, looking at the same thing, painting side by side and come up with completely different um, uh, uh, outputs. And so, so yeah, we were, were blessed to have a number of those works or to be able to get a number of those works, bring them together to look at this one this sort of three month period in the lives of, of these artists, still, still sort of developing their own styles. Um, but, but in Paris for the first time, um, for Grant Wood, second time for Marvin Cohn and, and just sort of how they each looked at the same scene and came up with a completely different outcome. I found myself too as I was looking at that thinking thinking about particularly Marvin Cohn because mm-hmm. you know Grant Wood you know passed away so young mm-hmm. and so you know we definitely see how his art changed through his life mm-hmm. but Marvin Cohn who had a very long career you can really see yep. how he changed mm-hmm. from those early days in the 30s to the later parts yep. of his career I'm thinking particularly of a couple of things not only the door series but mm-hmm. a couple of things that are in the front gallery I can't remember yeah. what I can't remember what you call that, but you've got some of his very late work in the front gallery, which is yeah. completely different. Yeah, our standalone gallery um, uh, really looks at the highlights of his career, uh, and that's kind of the stuff that's out all the time, and some of our best best pieces. Um, all the other shows really kind of complement that. But you're absolutely right. Um, we get to see in Marvin Cohn's life the trajectory of his career. We have no idea what Grant Wood would have done had he lived, you know, past the age of fifty. Uh, we, you know, Marvin, we see go into total abstraction, um, and we wonder if Grant Wood would have done the same thing. Talking with Sean Ulmer from the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. So we've talked a little bit, not only about, and we talk a lot about the traveling shows or the mm-hmm. temporary mm-hmm. exhibitions. We don't talk a lot often about the permanent exhibitions. You did mention the things you have in the in the front gallery, mm-hmm. which are mm-hmm. kind of there all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, we should probably talk about the about the uh, art in Roman life, yes, which is kind absolutely. of a, which is a which is a permanent yeah. part of the. I, you know, walking through the temporary yeah. exhibits, you know, that I, I kind of wander into that room and go. Oh, Yes. Oh, we have oh the these these Roman busts are yep. so awesome. Mm-hmm. So uh, to, to talk a little bit is that is that kind of static or do you change that you know change things up periodically with that one? We've got sixteen galleries and some are exclusively dedicated to temporary shows and those change with greater frequency about every three months. Um, but we have other galleries that are sort of more long lived and we, like you mentioned, we have one dedicated to the work of Grant Wood. We have one dedicated to the work of Marvin Cohn. Um, and we have one in between those two galleries. It's, it's called Beyond the Prairie, which looks at Iowa and Midwestern arts from all uh, different periods of time. And that changes on an, on an annual base. Art and Roman Life is another one of a kind of the long uh, lived um, galleries. We do make small periodic changes in it. The reason we don't make huge changes is because it's used heavily by school groups. It's the only Roman collection in the state of Iowa. And so um, even though it seems a bit of an outlier in our collection, which is mostly American art, you know, of the uh, 19th and 20th centuries, um, we, uh, we wanted to make sure that that collection stayed in this community and could be used. And so, so um, we keep it fairly steady, but we do make changes to the coin case and to a few other uh, areas to kind of keep it fresh. Um, we have four galleries dedicated to the work of Maurizio Lazansky, and people might feel that those are static, but they're not. They change completely every six months um, because their work's on paper and because we want them to, to be as fresh and, and, and crisp and, and colorful three, four hundred years from now as they are today. Um, we rotate them on a regular basis, so they're never up for more than six months. Um, everything comes down and new works go up, and what you see today, um, you may not see again um, in rotation for three, three and a half years. So if you haven't visited the museum, perhaps, you know, even pre-pandemic, but are thinking, mm-hmm. well, I've seen everything in mm-hmm. the Cedar Rapids Museum, museum of Art. No, 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 it's always changing, yes. and mm-hmm. there's always something new to see. Mm-hmm. And free summer is the perfect time to do it. Because um, without the admission costs, you know, you can come for just a little bit. You just want to come and look at one gallery or two galleries and then leave and come back another time. That's, that's easy to do when you don't have to pay admission. Um, or you can do the whole thing. It's a great place to bring people from out of town. Summer is our peak visitorship period anyhow. I mean, it's obviously a little bit lower this year than usual because we're still kind of coming out of the pandemic. Uh, hopefully, uh, but uh, uh, but it's still um, uh, a great time to come and and bring family, bring visitors, bring friends, and and make a make a day of it. 
Cedar Rapids Museum of Art is open Tuesday through Sunday, yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you want specific hours, you can visit the website, which is? CRMA.org. And free summers continue uh, up through Labor Day, so you can uh, Mm -hmm. visit anytime and not Mm -hmm. have to worry about ticket price. Uh, Sean, thanks for giving us the update on what's been going on at the museum, and uh, come back in a few weeks and uh, tell us what's going on for the fall and winter. Absolutely. Well, thanks for having me, and it's really good to see you. It's it's, it's so nice to see anyone. Sean Ulmer from the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. Again, crma.org. You can hear the Culture Crawl live on the radio many weekdays at 1020 or download the podcast, watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org slash culture or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Dennis Green. I'll talk to you later.